therapists are also you know human and we don't always have it together we don't always get it right sometimes we feel like we're falling apart we have struggles and trauma and again we're human so no we don't always have it together Welcome to Therapy Explained, where we explain, demystify, and destigmatize mental health and mental health treatment. My name is Denise Planner. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and your very own mental health cheerleader. Today's video, I am going to be addressing your assumptions about therapists. A few weeks ago now, I posted a sticker on my Instagram. If you're not following me there, make sure that you do at Talk Therapy. Um, and I just said, give me your assumptions, let's address them. And it was a lot of fun and there were some questions that I wasn't able to get to, so I decided to make a video with my favorite ones and also the ones that I wasn't able to get to. As you may notice, I'm still getting over a little bit of a nasal sinus infection. Um, I'm on the other side, I'm feeling much better, but um, this is also why this video is a little bit late this week. I thank you for being patient with me ahead of time. And yes, as always, this video will have a cheat sheet for you on Instagram. So make sure that you hop on over there right after you watch this video. So let's just go ahead and jump right to it. I'm going to be addressing your assumptions about therapists. They always have it together. Now this one is kind of common. I did get it. I've gotten it before and I did get it submitted a few times. And the answer is no, actually. For the most part, therapists are also, you know, human and we don't always have it together. We don't always get it right. Sometimes we feel like we're falling apart. We have struggles and trauma and again, we're human. So no, we don't always have it together. They probably always know how to deal with their personal issues effectively. This one's kind of like a yes and no situation. Ideally, yes, as therapists, we are self-aware, we have our coping skills, and we do tend to be, have those tools at our disposal to be able to manage things that are going on. But as I just mentioned, not all the time. We get it wrong sometimes, we do things we're not proud of, we feel overwhelmed, and that's because we're human. So yeah, ideally we're making use of our coping skills and we might have an easier time addressing things as they come up, but not all the time. They read people's minds. Now, at first I thought this would be a really cool superpower, but then after thinking about it, I'm not sure that I would like to know what everybody's thinking all the time. But no, so we cannot read your mind, we cannot read anyone's mind, and I think that this might come from, or this assumption might come from, the fact that therapists are really, in general, we tend to be able to read people's expressions, their behaviors, like their non-verbals. And so we're a little bit more sensitive to it. We're used to reading that from pe for people. It's part of our job. So we're more in tune and attuned to what other people might be feeling. And we also address it. That's, I think, also another difference for therapists is that you might, if you're not a therapist, you might also be able to kind of sense how someone might be feeling, but you probably don't address it or ask it. And that's the difference is that as therapists, we will definitely ask our clients and every so often we'll also ask the people around us. And that might feel like, oh my God, can you read my mind? But it's just that, you know, we can read nonverbals. We're trained for that and we're more attuned to what other people are saying and, and, and feeling and how they're behaving. Not sure if it's an assumption, but that they'll judge me. Um, I wanted to definitely address this one because I think it's important. A lot of people tend to have a hesitancy to go to therapy and to share everything, even their darkest secrets, because they feel that the other person will judge them, the therapist will judge them. And in general, of course, I can't speak for every therapist, but as far as for me and my colleagues that I know that I'm close to, no, we won't judge you. I often say to my students and to my colleagues and sometimes even to my clients, I don't care about the what as much as I care about the why. By that, what I mean is, of course, I care about your behaviors and patterns. It's part of the work that we do. 
but I'm much more interested about the why, the motivations behind your behaviors. And if we can together figure out why you're doing certain things, then we can change your patterns, whatever it is. There's very little that you can say to me or to a therapist that will shock us or make us judge you. We accept you for who you are and our job is to support you and help you in your healing. Y'all are emotionally mature. Ideally, <laughs> ideally we are, yes. We have that capacity and understanding again of ourselves. Some therapist training programs require us to take our own therapy. At least mine, I think, was about a minimum of six months, I want to say, of individual therapy during my master's program. So every, not everyone, excuse me, some programs will require us to do that. And in the work that we do, it's kind of hard not to use what we know as we're learning about it throughout our training. And yeah, ideally we do. But like I said in the first question or the first assumption, not always. Friends come to you for advice more often. Um, yes and no. So I have had it in the past and I think it tends out to happen at the beginning of my training. Usually when people hear that someone is studying to become a therapist, they just kind of assume like, okay, I can ask you this question. Just kind of like doctors or lawyers tend to say, you know, their family asks them for medical or legal advice. But it's the same for us as well is boundaries are extremely important. I don't mind landing an ear and supporting my friends, but I want to be there as a friend. I don't want to be there as a therapist. Much more work goes into being someone's therapist. So while, you know, I don't mind supporting others, especially my friends and, and listening to their concerns, um, I, I'm personally very strict on those boundaries and letting them know that, you know, there is a fine line and I will not cross it. Therapists fix you. I said this on Instagram and I'll say it again. No, we do not fix you because you are not broken. You psychoanalyze people all the time. <laughs> again, I think that this is because we are attuned to people's nonverbal behaviors. And of course, based on our training and education and experience, we have a better understanding of what behaviors, experiences might affect someone's view of the world or someone's current emotions. So if you tell me a certain part of your life or if you tell me how you're feeling, I can make safe assumptions about what you might have experienced. And again, this varies from therapist to therapist, but I have a really uh, strict boundary around not playing a therapist for people who are not my clients. It takes a lot of work and a lot of energy to hold space for someone. There's a lot going on in the back of my head with my clients. I'm not just sitting there and listening. I'm actually doing a lot of work in my head. And so I personally just tend to stay away from that. I do not psychoanalyze unless you're my clients. And like I said though, sometimes, yeah, I can probably make safe assumptions about someone based on something that they've said, but then it's also up to me to point it out or say it. And most of the time I choose not to because it's not my job. Um, in general though, we're not going around judging people and psychoanalyzing people. That's at least for me <laughs> and for my colleagues that are close to me, um, no. <laughs> it's a friend you pay for. Oof, okay. So <laughs> this one was interesting because I know that it's just like culturally very different to think I'm going to pay someone to sit there and listen to my problems. And as I've said in this video and I've said in past videos, your therapist is not your friend. You can tell us anything and we are a secure attachment. We won't judge you. We will accept you. We will support you. We will always be there or we will be consistent while we're in treatment together. But we are not your friends because the power dynamic is different. We don't tell you our pains and fears and darkest secrets. And so that means that we hold more power over you in that session. So that's a way in which we're not your friend. 
And we're also not gossiping or simply joking around. Now you might have a kind of relationship with your therapist where you can laugh and make jokes and that's okay, but they're not necessarily and not exactly your friend because we're also providing you with guidance. We're using our experience, our training and our education to help you look at patterns, change patterns, heal. So there's a lot of work that goes into the time that you're spending with your therapist. So that you wouldn't be doing uh, with a friend. So no, we're not friends that you pay for. All they do is listen. Ah, like I just said, there's actually a lot of work going on in my head as I'm listening to someone tell me something. I'm not just listening to what you're saying, I'm also listening to the subtext. I'm trying to contextualize you. What are your past experiences? How does that affect what you're telling me right now? When we talked about your goals, so how does that connect to your goals? Where do you want to be? Does that align? And so as I'm trying to process all of that and filter through what you're trying to tell me, I'm also yeah, listening to you attentively. What does that mean for you? How do you feel about these things? And I'm also trying to come up with my next question. Based on all of these things that I just processed as I'm listening to you, I'm also trying to say, okay, well, if it doesn't align with a goal or if this connects to a past trauma, how am I gonna address it? How can I ask the question? Or do I wanna ask a question? Do I wanna just reflect? And then once I make that decision, I also have to be prepared for your possible answer. If I ask it this way or if I say, that way based on my client's trauma and experience as well as our dynamic and rapport how will they respond and then I have to also be prepared for that and figure out how I'm going to respond to your response <laughs> so there's just a lot going on in the back of my head as I'm listening so we don't just listen and like I said before we're using our training education and experience to provide reflections to provide guidance and support to get you to where you want to be Therapists don't need therapy. Well, like I mentioned before, it's actually kind of crucial for a therapist to go to therapy. In my personal opinion, if your therapist has never been in therapy, there's probably some limitation there. It is my belief that I cannot help my patient through something that I haven't already learned how to manage. If I'm having trouble with my own anger, I can't help you through it because I'm still struggling through it. Not to say that I'm helping my patients through every experience that I've ever been through and so that therefore I can help them or that I know how to deal with everything, but there are definitely certain areas, wounds, traumas that I needed to heal in order to be able to hold space for my patient. If my patient is going through grief and I'm going through grief or I have grief that's unresolved and I start crying in the middle of that session, that's gonna be a disservice to my client. So I'm a strong believer in doing your own work as well. I highly encourage my students to go to therapy because it's extremely important, especially early on in their training, and to continue to do so. Some programs, like I mentioned, require you to go to therapy, and I personally have been in therapy before I went to my master's program, during my master's program, and I've even returned to see my therapist during times of extreme trauma or stress. I do what I do because I believe in it. I genuinely think that it helps people. I've seen it help people and I've actually felt the impact of therapy. I have my own therapist, not on speed dial, but on my phone and she makes room for me when I need to come back to therapy. So I think that it's actually very crucial that we go to therapy. It's the complete opposite. Therapists absolutely should have their own therapists. Well, those are all the assumptions for now. Like I mentioned, every so often I'll drop a sticker to have you share with me your assumptions, questions, favorite music. I love interacting with you all. So if you're not already following me there, make sure that you do at Talk Therapy so that you can interact with me on Instagram, get your cheat sheet for every video. If you liked this kind of video, make sure to give it a thumbs up so I can continue to make them. It's really fun. I love talking to you about mental health. Subscribe to this channel if you want more videos on all things mental health, and make sure to leave a comment if you enjoyed it. I will go ahead and see you in the next one. And of course, remember as always, I'm cheering for you.